Now, back to the focus group with Tim and John. Glamour today is nothing but a tight skirt, loose hips, and wet lips. An entertaining look at the world of business. Make it work. Make it work. Make it make it make it work. 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 Hey, welcome back to the Focus Group. As promised, Tim Bennett here with my good friend and co-host, John Nash. And uh, leave it to the Focus Group to pick one of the hottest days, I think the hottest heat wave of the season, to do our Pursue Your Scoops, Volkswagen, All Track, Focus Group, Ice Cream Trail through Pennsylvania Road Tour. Is that is that the right word? 2018. 2018. Just, just to add as many words as possible to the whole equation. And for right? those of you who have followed our road trips over the years, <laughs> when we did, John and I did a road trip, gosh, probably five years ago, six years ago for Volkswagen Beetle. And that was average through from Philadelphia through to Las Vegas. And I think it was about 100 or 105 every day. We were in a heat dome. And uh, so today we just finished day one uh, here in Pennsylvania. And it was close to 100. And tomorrow promises to be 105, at least with the index. So a good time to test out the Volkswagen All Track as well as to uh, do this Pursue Your Scoops ice cream tour. And uh, John and I and our friend Brian from Admark 360 uh, found this road trip that the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture had put together, and there were 12 locations. And so John and I talked about it and thought, let's try to do six and first, six. First, first, props to Tim for a master mapping job. Both days were about 204 to 230 miles. You couldn't avoid getting it perfect, but Tim did a darn good job because he figured out the two of the dairies were owned by the Amish, as Amish, your dad says, or, the, or Amish. The, the Amish, and <laughs> and they were closed on Monday. <laughs> of course, they're closed on Monday. Who knew? But a uh, good thing I checked the night before. The one thing I am going to see if John can do for the second day is John seemed to use the navigation uh, <laughs> on his phone versus <laughs> using the navigation on the all track, which I use all the time. So I'm convinced, John, that tomorrow we're going to try the navigation on the all track. Uh, uh, John's a creature of habit. For many of you know John, and that's what he wants to do, and that's what he wants to use, and that's what he knows. So that's what he did. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so we we took off here at about uh, ten thirty this morning, and uh, we went to a, a our very first stop was in Lansdale, Pennsylvania, which isn't that far outside of Philadelphia. It's probably twenty five thirty miles outside of Philly, a place called Freddie Hill Farm. We lucked out. We totally lucked out. Freddie Hill Farms. The first person that Tim and Brian met when they got out of the car, because I was fiddling with a this thing we bought. And by the way, we'll be cutting during our talk to still images and video that we took of each of the dairies and the end of the road trip. But Tim met the owner of Freddie Hill Farm. I think his name was Nancy. Her name was Nancy. Well, she actually spotted us taking pictures. John, yep. had, John had the camera out and she said, are you guys on the ice cream tour or the ice cream trail? And we said, yeah, we are. And who are you? And she told us she was Nancy and did not steer us wrong. She led us to some great ice cream that, uh, that Freddie Hill Farm had, and that was uh, that was our first stop, which um, proved to be a good one. Freddie Hill also had a miniature golf course, which we well, would have liked to have availed ourselves <laughs> of. Putt putt, as we say. I would have liked to have done it, but we didn't. But <laughs> we had no so time at for that. Freddie Hill, are we going to do favorite uh, stuff later? Or I think what um, I, th I think let's let's maybe let's just go quick about where we went, and yeah. then we can say okay. what we liked for the day, and then after we're going to take a break and do our come back for our second day. John and I will give our overall favorites, yeah. I think. So the second uh, dairy after that was called Mary Mead Farm, and that was out in Lansdale, same area. In fact, yeah. I think it was only 20 minutes or it, it was, was pretty like two it was, miles. It was pretty close, close. to where we were yeah. at the first one, and that was a very different locale, enjoyable nonetheless. Next place? Next place we went to was Crystal Springs, and I don't have my note in front of me, but you could probably say where that was located. Uh, Snexville. <laughs> yeah, Snexville. You know, the Snexville. funny thing about Pennsylvania, these places are not, it's a very accessible ice cream tour if you live in <laughs> the Northeast, whether you're coming up from Maryland or down from New York or Connecticut or Jersey. It's very accessible, but it's funny, these little towns in Pennsylvania, yeah. these are all independent dairy farms, and that was why they, uh, why they were developed. So that place was called Crystal Spring. And the, the odd thing there, I think odd thing, was we had a mint chip because uh, Bob had told Bob's, yep. uh, John's husband, said, "Try you got to try mint chocolate chip. I thought it tasted like licorice. Yeah, and it was the, weird. And the, they said something about it. They said something about the flavor. Well, she went back and said, no, it's just fresh mint. So maybe I just, ne just never had fresh mint ice cream before. The next one up was uh, Wehar Farms. Now, was Wehar the... Um, it was Jake and Morgan. Okay, who? Yeah, and that was With was the, that Lonnie? The blueberry buckle. Yeah. Okay. So Lolly. We, yeah. Lolly. So apparently, one of the women who helped, or one of the uh, dairy farmers who helped pull together the Pursue Your Scoops tour, was Lolly, and she's one of the owners of Wayhar Farms. And when we were there, 
we asked this guy, Jake, who must have been like seven foot ten, <laughs> big guy, and he, we asked him what his favorite flavor was, and it was blueberry buckle. buckle. Blueberry buckle, but right. Blueberry buckle, and it turned out to be our favorite from that particular uh, dairy, and that was out in Benville, Pennsylvania. Well, it was the favorite of John and <laughs> Brian. Brian, but my favorite <laughs> was something I'd never, ever seen before, and as a kid, I used to love the gum called tea berry, which is really a wintergreen berry that grows on the, on the East Coast. But it's a, it's a wintergreen flavor, and it, as a kid, you might remember the old gum from the 60s yeah. came in kind oh, of a yeah, pink yeah, pack. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so I had the tea berry ice cream, and I thought that was great. <laughs> and so from Way, uh, Wayhar Farms, we then went to Fox Meadows Creamery. Now, first half of our show, uh, Tim and I were in the studio, and behind us was a picture of some silos, a red barn, a green cornfield. That was actually Fox Meadows Creamery. And um, I'm going to switch to some video that I took, a little panoramic shot. It was as beautiful as the backdrop we were sitting in front of. However, um, it it was a commercial enterprise, right? Yeah. I don't was, know how it, else to put it. They, it, they it was beautifully done. The inside well appointed. was well appointed, a nice gift shop, very polite staff. Uh, there was a woman there named Paige and Leanna. I think that had helped us. They had something called the baked fox, which John got, which was a like a, a kind of a melted um, chocolate cake or brownie with vanilla ice cream. But um, it was all very good. But it, it it was what you would expect, I, I guess, as a as a commercial. Actually, enterprise. it was, yeah. And uh, the last one we did at, at that uh, on that day on today <laughs> is uh, the Coventry Parlor at Laurel Locks, and that was in Pottstown, PA, which is probably about thirty miles away from where Tim right. is at, where we're at right now. That would be considered probably a Philadelphia Philadelphia suburb. And Brian had his, his niece and uh, her husband and the, the and two his kids. Great niece and great niece. They right. just had their first day of school, and I think it's first grade in kindergarten was the... So we treated the kids to ice cream. They loved us to death. Well, they loved the Milky Way. They, they had the, the Milky, Milky, Way, Milky Way ice cream, ice cream cone, yeah. and we got some vanilla soft serve there. And uh, one thing we both found out on this trip, I didn't know, and I've known Brian forever, he's a berry guy. He wants a berry-flavored berry, ice cream. Yeah. Every time we went somewhere, it had to be a raspberry or a cherry or some sort of berry <laughs> thing. Yeah. So that was uh, that was the first day. It was the the car did great. We had uh, we went 208 miles. Yep. I think we got 33 miles per gallon. As we <laughs> said, it was very hot. We forgot the you know one of my the bogeyman for me is the fuel light. The fuel light came. Oh on. gosh. But it was an interesting tug of war. No one freaked out, but we were in an area where we had not seen gas stations for a while, and we were going to get on the PA Turnpike, and Tim thought about it for a second, and he said, you know, the last time I missed, missed an exit on the Turnpike, it was 20 minutes to the next 20 one. 20 miles. 20 miles. To the next. The car was telling us we had a 15 to 25 yeah. miles of gas. You know, it could be more. Tim has always taught me it's more. But we ended. Tim goes, why don't you get off here? We found a Speedway gas station. You know, we've teased. I, if you watch our all track review from two years ago when we were out west, I teased John all about the, the light went on and it was panic ensued. And his, his brother in law, time. Steve, loved that whole thing. John will say he didn't panic, but I did watch John's behavior because I was sitting in the passenger seat. And though he says he didn't panic and he was putting on an air of. Uh, no worries. Nonchalance. He kept hitting the button and seeing it go down from 25 to, to 20 15. to 15. I'm thinking, okay, he's nervous about the gas. And he's probably right. There, we were in a very rural area, and there were a lot of gas stations that were closed. Yeah. So uh, we did. We did go find one, <laughs> which we was kind of the funny. gas. Yeah. So that that was. So the first day was a success. We were beat though, and we ate a lot of ice cream. Brian was trying to figure out how many calories he thought we had. We had way too much. He lowballed. Brian lowballed like 700 calories. We had yeah. to be over 1,500. I. I. And we're just. And we didn't really. We we got little scoops that we shared, but you know, after six of these dairies, now. Do you want to pick our favorite for the day, for today, or for the whole? Um, yeah, yeah. Why don't we pick? Why don't we? Why don't we pick it at the end? All right, okay. we'll, we'll pick our favorite. So after, what well, you want to take us to break? Oh, perfect timing. <laughs> we had this timed out. You know, we we're professionals. We know what we're doing. Here, by the way, is Tim's prep sheet. Here's the prep sheet. Here's our, here's and there's our passport. Our, yeah. Oh, we had to get stamped at every place. That was the oh, deal. and so, so yeah. Check this stamp. out. I I may do a a, a close up of this uh, cutaway to it, but. We thought the stamp for every dairy was going to be different. Right. But it was the same stamp. It was the Keystone PA Keystone logo. PA. It'd be we like we felt like having the one go ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk. <laughs> you're, you're thinking it's going to be like if you're yeah. in Europe and every country stamps you something, something different. different. But it was, uh, that was, it was fun. And we've also posted pictures on Facebook. So if you go to focusgroupradio.com and listen to our Pat, we got loud and clear. Did you see what your friend Pat posted what after I say? posted the pictures from today? 
he put uh, he he did he did a video of how to um, lose belly fat. <laughs> so so thanks Pat. Thanks Pat. Yeah, we love you. <laughs> so. Hey, all right, we're uh, going to take a really quick break here. When we return, we're going to wrap up. Um, well, we'll be done with day two when we return. Actually, we'll be getting in the car tomorrow morning and doing day two. So when we come back, um, we'll be finished with that. And we're going to run through the dairies that we stopped at and also pick our favorite two, one from each day, and tell you some of the flavors that we actually thought were the best that we had on the trip. So it's the focus group. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this quick break. Brought to you by Volkswagen. Visit VW.com to learn more. You're listening to The Focus Group. I said to my girlfriend just the other day, monsters are interesting, I said. With Tim Bennett and John Nash. And I'll bet you meet a lot of interesting people, too. Hey, welcome back to the Focus Group. It's day two of our Pursue Your Scoops Pennsylvania Ice Cream Trail tour with the Volkswagen All Track. And uh, it is hot, and we're in the same clothes. And I said to John, I think we're going to stink. But John insisted that we wear our branding. So we had to wear our shirts again. So we didn't have time. <laughs> Wait, Carol Merrill. After last night, we didn't do any laundry. We just had some salads and crashed because we were so kind of ice creamed out but boy was i glad for the salad <laughs> tim ordered from a great restaurant we're, we're in tim's neighborhood by the way and he ordered from a great K, what'd you call it kj's 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 we got these chicken caesar delicious salads. because after <laughs> we we did not <laughs> we had a lot of ice cream yeah i we, oh, this morning we were almost like i don't know if we could do it <laughs> but we did it and it was a lot of fun so uh and by the way if you want to check out some pictures we took some great shots along the way so if you go to focusgroupradio.com um, well, no, actually, if you go to focusgroupradio.com, you'll be able to see all of our shows as well as this one. But if you go to our Facebook page, which is Focus Group Radio, we have all a, a photo blog there of the two days of our trip, plus some of the pictures and the, and the uh, ice cream that we tested along the way. So today we did the, yesterday we did six, uh, six of the creameries and dairies, independent dairies at the uh, Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture put together for this tour of independent uh, dairy farms. And today we did the other six. <laughs> and we did cross a little bit. Pots we crossed because, as you mentioned, yeah. some things were closed. So yeah. the, the our first stop we went to was a place called Lap. Was wow. it Lap Valley? Lap Valley Farm. Lap Valley yeah. Farm. and New Holland, PA. And which it, is right near Blue Ball, PA, <laughs> which is also near Bird in Hand and also near Intercourse. And for all of you that <laughs> are These are real towns, folks. These are all real towns, but they all had very innocent reasons why they were named that. For instance, Blue Ball was named that way because in the 1700s, there was a hotel there, and the person, the proprietor, didn't have a sign. He put out a blue ball. <laughs> and so they called the town Blue Ball after the inn that was there. Uh, and intercourse was actually the end of a race course, and it was supposed to be intercourse, intercourse and it yeah. became intercourse. So there's uh, as as much as we'd like to think differently, that's at least that's what we read. It's a, about. Yeah, it's... So this Lap Valley farm was owned by the Amish. <laughs> Amish. <laughs> Tim's dad says Amish. I, and now and I think he does it as a joke. Of course he does. And now I'm stuck saying it because I, and they're not going to mind. It was the Amish and it was a spectacular farm. Magnificent. It was so clean and neat. They had baby cows you could go up to and yeah. pet. I, I met two farm kitties. One was very friendly. Farm kitty. Uh, they had regular cows that were walking around, but the buildings were great. It looked like you're in the middle of a dairy Way farm. off the beaten path. And the amount of people that know that this dairy is there that drive into the barn and there's a drive through and we're getting fresh milk and eggs. It was... It, you know, served by one of the the women there. Her a name drive is through. You're not. You, you said right. drive through, right? They came in. They they come to a window and they get a two gallon gallons of milk, of milk or, or whatever. And and she was. And we we kind of thought initially she was just in costume, but she really was a a, a, a an Amish person that worked there. Very pleasant. And very her fun. name was Marianne, and we laughed because I wanted to buy some butter and buy some cheese. Uh, cheese. And she just kind of shook her head and she said, "Well, that's not ours because all of our cream that we use in the summer." is done for ice cream. All the cream from the cows is for ice cream. If you want to get butter that we do and, and mm -hmm. so forth, come back in the fall. As John said, you could eat off the driveway. It, it was, was so clean, clean it was and so beautiful, pristine beautiful. and just gorgeous. It was it was magnificent. We don't want to preface too much. <laughs> but you'll show you'll show that. <laughs> you'll, you'll see some of the So where did we head next took. to after that? Uh, next we went to the milk house the milk house at Oregon Dairy. Um in Oregon City, wasn't it called Oregon City too? It's or? in Lidditz. Lidditz, that's Lidditz, what it was. Okay. PA. 
I'm going to just put it this way. It's kind of like a key food attached to an uh, ice cream bar. I was going to say, if you're familiar with the Stu Leonard's. Yeah, it's Stu Leonard's. Stu Leonard's, exactly which a lot of people like have Leonard's. in the Northeast. I don't know if there's other yeah, places. Yeah, we have one in Yonkers. But it was very much like that. It certainly was um, well run, but it was more of a kind of a destination. Destination, family. Gift and, shop, and there are a lot of kids. Yeah, kids were playing outside. They had this really great uh, slide and cows. You could, like, fake cows you could play there. But. We tried to find the ice cream, and we ended up in a supermarket that was really the size of like a, right. a giant or a key food. To take your pick, and we were like, eh, "Okay." And so uh, we didn't stay there too long. And we, we had to ask, actually, right? I think we liked the butter pecan that was there. Yeah, but that was a stretch. So then we yeah. went from there to York, PA, and the the dairy was called the Perry Dell Farm Dairy, and um, I think that was the furthest out we went. Yeah, it was quite a distance from, and quite a distance from Philadelphia. From it would be the farthest. It was one the out furthest the north and west yeah. that we went, and I'm not sure it was actually worth the trip. It's a long ride for a pretzel. <laughs> now we we wanted to get all our stamps because we want the ice cream well, scoop we, and the shirt. We didn't realize we could have had someone just do us a double. <laughs> yeah, they could but, have done that. Yeah, that place was. Um, it was a long ride, and uh, and it was a hot day. Yeah. So what was our next guy? So the next one we went to was... Oh, a, yes. Was That's a, the goats. Yeah, what was that one called? Patches. Patches. The Patches Family Creamery, uh, established in 2009. So it's relatively new. It's in Lebanon, PA. And um, we drove up, and Tim was instantly entranced oh, with the goats. They had goat. baby goats. He wanted a goat, a donkey, and a pony, because they had these animals there. They were really, really... You could walk right up to the fence. They were very gentle. And they had a nice building, very f well run. Um and it was just, it was a good, it was a good dairy, uh, good the winter, dairy Right, creamery. the winner we liked there was peaches and cream, was the flavor we I, liked I'm there. not a peach fan. Bob would tell you this in a second flat. I, I, but that flavor, you know, really won the cake. And the other thing which we'll tell later on is we had vanilla at every place. So oh, we I, wanted for, yeah, to find I forgot out what, to say we, that. Yeah, yeah, we wanted to find out what was the best vanilla, so we'll tell you that, because we thought that could be the kind of our... Um, you know, as a bellwether or as a, uh, a gauge... The va choosing vanilla was a really interesting choice because soft serve or or normal right, scoop, right. It, it they varied a lot. They really varied, they varied a lot. They varied a lot. You're so right. from there, we went to a place called Twilight Acres, which was actually not far from Patches. Hard to find at first. Um, and it was on, it's in Wommelsdorf, literally W-O-M-E-L-S-D-O-R-F, right. <laughs> Wommelsdorf, P-A. Two Amish uh, young ladies ran, were at the, the counter. They were f very sweet and very fun, and they had a donut case there. And, and Tim su sarcastically says, when were these made? Expecting them so to how say, old are these donuts? Like 7-Eleven, <laughs> last week, right? She said this morning, and one of them was a, a, a looked like a, a, like a jelly-filled donut, but it was filled with cream. And cinnamon, yeah, on the outside. We bought one. I, I would actually say that the donut even eclipsed the ice cream. Yeah, the donut was probably the best donut I've had in years, and I love a donut. <laughs> I said to John, it's the best donut. And Brian, for some reason, wanted to have one. But all of a sudden, you're going to count calories? I mean, we've been eating all He's scraping one of the styrofoam cups with the ice cream. He's like, We did have the cookies and cream ice cream there. Somebody recommended, which was which was quite good. The, 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 the farm we talked about right before that, though, the one that was- um, Patches? The Patches family? No, the- um, Are we on Twilight? Yeah, we're I was just going to mention the, the one flavor we thought was Mutella. That was the one that was Peridel. I just saw it in my notes here. Yeah. And the Mutella was made with, with Nutella. And that was an interesting... We, we tried to find different things at each place. John wasn't in love with that. No, and that place was the one, as I said, that was furthest off the beaten path for us. And not sure we would... It was on the thing. We had to do it, but... The other good thing with Twilight, and we found this in very few places, some oh. of the ice cream tasted icy sometimes. Yeah, too much like water. chips or something. The texture of this ice cream was was very rich and, and, and uh, quite nice. It was a great yeah. texture for ice cream. And we wrapped up the entire uh, day today, just about 50 minutes ago, uh, at Chester Springs Creamery at Milky Way Farm. Um, this was also fairly close to Philly in relation to the other ones, which are further out. I don't, um, we were, it's a cute, uh, here's the word, bucolic. You know, like you, you, want, you go down a drive <laughs> and there's the farmland and there's the barns and the silos and there's a place where they sell the ice cream and the treats. 
all set up really great. But I, I have to just say, meh, you know, the ice cream yeah. was, we were like, eh, you know, by now we've had 11 before this, it was right. 11 other stops to gauge this one. By. We did have lavender ice cream there, which was good. I forgot that was the, the lavender, best one. The, we that did was like the, the best. Lavender. lavender was good. Of course, good, Brian you know. did another berry thing, which we could care less about, but the lavender <laughs> was, was quite good. The other thing that a lot of these places, and I think it was the weather, there was a lot of sad produce at a lot of these yeah, places, which yeah. I kept trying to get tomatoes, and a lot of the places had great fresh flowers, fresh cut flowers, or, or um, peaches and some sort uh -huh. of fruits and tomatoes, but... When I say it was sad, I think it was just it was so darn hot, and I think a well, lot of the things stuff are was wilting. Just, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. tough. So, John, if I were to ask you then, of so of the, if I were to say, could you pick? Should we do? Can you pick your favorite from each day, or could you pick your just I could favorite overall? I could, I could do the following. I could pick in the following order: first, second, third. So, to I think well, today, let's, let's ask this first. Who, who had the best vanilla of the twelve? I thought it was Lat, the first one we went to this morning, the Lat Family Farm. That one we described that was absolutely perfect. Now, I, I might be, you took notes on everything we I said. I did take notes on everything. <laughs> so, Keeping us honest, folks. Keeping so there, us well, there honest. Is, there is a difference then, because do you remember yesterday's vanilla? Yesterday's vanilla at um, uh, Coventry. Coventry. Which was, was our the, last stop, which we thought was the best, best that so, day. Yeah, that day, right. That was soft serve. The one at Lap was a was regular a scoop, scoop. Regular scoop, and so we would say the two best vanillas. And for soft serve, the best vanilla was definitely a Coventry, Coventry. in Pottstown. Mm -hmm. And for the um, scoop vanilla yeah. would be Lap, Lap Lap Valley Farm in New yeah. Holland. And it the texture of that ice cream, we we talked about it with Twilight with Twilight, but the texture of the ice cream and the and the quality of the ice cream at lap was if you get out that way and if you're a mint chocolate chip fan and bob had me sample mint chocolate chip yep. wherever we could mostly you see that ice cream is green yeah well the lap valley farm their mint chocolate chip looked like vanilla with chocolate chips in it and it tasted fantastic which tells me that either they're putting food coloring in the mint chocolate chip to make it look mint, which it's not required. I don't need to have the thing look green. green. It was fantastic, though. Lap Valley, across the board, I and, thought had some of the best stuff. Right, and we had vanilla there. We also had maple walnut. Oh. And we had raspberry. And it's the only place in my notes where we all agreed that, hands down, no matter what it was, it was great. It was good. And we probably should have tried all 30 or 40 flavors, but it was Tim it was decided that they had, that there was a something they did with the ratio of cream. Yeah, I think there was a probably higher butter fat content or something in it. And, and or, not uh, ba winding back to what we said before about the physicality of the place, it's all one experience. Yeah. I mean, you're at this beautiful, pristine, clean, clean, clean dairy farm and then you have this delicious ice cream it was fantastic yeah we can't emphasize how beautiful the grounds and the and the presentation now, was at lap i would say uh that was number one number two for ice cream was freddie hill farm right and that was the very first dairy when we went to that's where tim met the owner nancy and it was lemon cookie it was a lemon cookie crunch which was lemon ice cream which is hard to find i always oh. joke on the show about nobody makes orange ice cream and i don't mean sherbet so not lemon sherbet or orange sherbet, ice cream. but orange ice cream or lemon ice cream. And they made lemon ice cream, and they broke in it lemon uh, Oreos. And you know we love Oreos, but that – and actually it was – we couldn't believe how great it was, and it was the first ice cream we tasted of the tw of the 12 places we were going. And they got Best of Philly for their Chocolate Rainforest Crunch, which we also got, which we thought was quite good. And um, so Freddie Hill, I would agree with you that Freddie Hill – for me was uh was now also what would be another one of stuff. your top ones so you, we all agreed on freddie hill and we all agreed on um lap valley but what would be another one and then i would say the, the um for the authenticity i would say for me probably way har yeah way har was great and yeah. uh that's where we we had jake and morgan and it, there, there was a variety of flavor blueberry it buckle. was very much a a home uh home baked homemade feel uh, it was um, friendly, and it just felt like you were in somewhere different. Some of the some of the places might have been as we well, mentioned so a little like, too like, commercial. Well, Tim, Tim would say under his breath, "We're in friendlies." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're some, in friendlies or something. So, but I, you know, overall, if I was to say, if I was to do, if I was to recommend anybody do this trip, and I told them which ones to go to, which six to go to, um, obviously, this is just our opinion, and, and some people may have other ideas. But um, I would say that for me, for distance, I will go again to Freddie Hill 
farm. Yep. Because and I will I'll go, go to La- Valley. Get the lemon. Yeah. And if I was to take a trip with somebody and say, hey, let's go out to the, to the country, out to our Lancaster County, I'd say, let's go out to the dairy there. And I would go in the fall and I would get eggs and I would yep. get the butter and cream. Bring a cooler and bring because a cooler. <laughs> if you're going to, and it's a, it's a beautiful area. Yeah. I, in fact, there were many times when we were in, at Lap Valley in that area going to the next one where I kept saying to the guys in the car, like, I could cycle out here. They were beautiful roads. People you know, in buggies, horse and buggies, buggies, horse and wagons. So that one may, as a destination, yeah. that could be one where that, that could be a central point, and then you go explore some of those other areas. And then Freddie Hill, for anybody that was, uh, for accessibility, if you were just yeah. coming down 95 and you said uh, you wanted to try one of these on the Pennsylvania Ice Cream Trail, uh, for about 30 miles or so out of Philly or right off the turnpike, less than less than 30 miles, you can get up to Lansdale and uh, try some of that great ice cream and there. And play so, miniature golf. And play miniature <laughs> golf. So for me, it was for accessibility and reach was Freddie. Right. For probably the overall experience yes, and just Lap what I expected the trip to be would be Lap Valley would be my favorites. I agree that I think the vanilla, you picked them right. I think it was Coventry on the first day in Pottstown for soft serve. And, and Lab Valley. And Lab oh Valley. God. And if I said, what was your favorite ice cream overall? I might say the mint chocolate chip at Lab Valley. Really? Okay. Yeah. Although I'm really torn because the lemon cookie, it's so rare to have actual, not as Tim said, not sherbet, yep. lemon ice cream. It was incredible. I would say for me, it would be the lemon crunch, uh, the lemon cookie crunch at, at Freddie Hill and the tea berry. At way hard well, yeah, for me because I just I could never find tea loves berry. Loves berry, yeah. And um, and I would say I did like that vanilla soft serve at Coventry because yeah, that was good. It we was did really find good. John mentioned it earlier as as a as a standard to say let's just everybody does vanilla. Let's see who does it best. We were a little bit surprised on how bland some of them were, quite yeah. frankly, and some some of them didn't have maybe as much as a bite as we thought or or had the full flavor. And uh, so I think we, our, it was our, a good our test. thing on the trip was Briars. <laughs> so it's just Briars vanilla. Anyway, I think we're out of time. Are you? Okay. Yeah, look, we didn't do bad. So, uh, hey, thanks for tuning in this week. Thanks for coming with us on the Pursue Your Scoops road trip through uh, the Pennsylvania and these amazing dairies. There's 12 of them. You can visit the PA tourism site to uh, check out the card. Pursue your scoops. It's a really cool thing. Thank you, Tim, for coming up with the trip. Thank you for also mapping it. Did a great job. Oh, and before I forget, the navigation system on the AllTrack works great. Oh, yeah, we forgot the whole thing. So yesterday I I joked with John about he was using his phone, and I said, why don't we just type in the navigation? navigation. It worked like a gem. It worked like a charm. the minute I used it, he and Brian were super calm. They almost fell asleep because they thought the car was telling me what to do and well, where to was. go. Well, it was. And I wasn't was looking down at my you. phone. I'm like, why doesn't your phone talk to you? I can't, I'm, just, I'm just looking at it. I'm very old. You know, you think I'm new age, but I'm really old. So yeah. all track wagon performed beautifully, about 33 miles per gallon each day. And that's with three adult males and a 100 degree temperature and outside. And the air conditioner pumping. Yeah. It that, was pumping. It, it was max air because it, it got hot out. All right. So... Thanks again to Tim. Thanks again for the mapping, for making this all happen. Uh, Big thanks to Deep Discount. Uh, Go to focusgroupradio.com. Click on the Deep Discount logo down on the right-hand side. Start shopping. Fill your basket. Usually get free shipping. And a very big thanks to VW of America um, for working with us for the last eight or nine years. It's almost nine. (laughs) It's scary. It's almost nine. Almost ten. But uh, the car performed beautifully. So uh, uh, as Tim likes to put it, on a long-range uh, test drive. If, test you, drive. If, if you want to look at it that way, the cars are holding up beautifully. Very happy with it. Drives great. The fin finishes great. And it's guess easy what? To, easy to connect the tech. It's tech great. And the built-in navigation works like a charm. Little did I know, a year and a year and three quarters into the ownership of the vehicle, you're still discovering magic with the all track job. <laughs> all right. So everybody have a safe week and don't text and drive. Arrive alive. It's the Focus Group with Tim Bennett and John Nash, formerly on Sirius XM Satellite Radio and now accessible on all platforms. Subscribe, like, and rate us on your platform of choice. Learn more at focusgroupradio.com.